Hi, everybody. We're going to talk today about uh, basic principles of programming languages. When I say uh, basic principles, I'm going to talk about all kinds of criteria for evaluating languages and things like that. So the first question that we have to ask ourselves is, what languages do we know? So uh, we got this list that um, the participants here pretty much threw off the top of their head. A whole bunch of languages from uh, Jenna for, for Phantom, R, Dart, Kotlin, Ceylon, I like Frog, Go, Swift, C, Kobo, uh, Fortran, Bash, Basic, Java, C, C++, C Sharp, BB.NET, Python, JavaScript, Ruby, Scala, Proglog, Clo, Clojure, Lisp, F Sharp, Haskell, ML, PHP, SQL, HTML, and XAML. And the next question I want to ask you guys is which language is the best? So the question is when we come to ask which language is the best, so we always get answers if we look it up on the internet. Some guys will get up and say, oh, C++ is the best. Why? It's the most efficient. It's the most this, it's the most that. Some other guys say, oh, I love Python or Ruby or I don't even know why, because I just have to look at the computer and just tap, 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 and it knows what to do. And others will come up with all kinds of different answers why they like this one or like that one. But the question wasn't which language do you like? The question was which language is the best? And the answer to that is very interesting. The answer to that is it depends for what? Meaning, if we assume that we are only talking about two incomplete languages and not something that's in development and incomplete and I don't know what. So pretty much, I want to claim here that you could probably do anything with anything. Meaning to say that if we, for example, take a look at the following picture. If I have some higher level language, I don't care which one, higher level, some higher level language. And obviously, as we spoke once, I don't know, you know, in previous lectures, we have down here the real machine, which speaks machine language, right? Which can, you can symbolically, symbolically represent the machine language um, using some symbolic language, like, like assembly or uh, like assembly language. So, there has to be some way of converting this higher level language to the machine language. Right, there's some, some, some way, some compiler that knows how to take every higher order construction that you made and translate it into simplistic machine language. If that is true, let's take machine language number two, a higher level language number two. This is higher level language number one, and this will be higher level language number two. And there has to be some way to be able to run that on the current machine as well. Which means that there are ways of translating every higher level construct, every higher level or whatever you want to call it. It could be anything complicated from inheritance to object oriented to whatever you want. There has to be some way of, of afterwards to manipulating the code in such a way that at the end we get it down to very simplistic machine language code. Now, if we can go one way, why can't we go the other way? Well, theoretically, we could. Meaning that if I, if I start from some machine language, I could pretty much go backwards. Meaning to say, take the language, figure out what's being said over here, and portray it in some higher level language. For example, if I take, take a look at a loop. So a loop, very simplistic construct, but it's still a construct. A loop is just a label or two labels and they are jump and a conditional jump. So if I see that thing in assembly or in a machine language, I can go and rewrite that as a loop. I can rewrite functions. I can rewrite everything I want. It might not look like the original version. It means to say, if we started from higher level at one and went down to machine language and all the way back up, we might get something that looks different, but it's functionally the same. Now, if this picture is true, then I want to claim you can write anything with anything. Because you can always go and start in some higher level language and bring it down to machine language and then walk it back up, reverse engineer it in a sense to some higher level language too. So if I were to take in that code that I just generated in higher level language too and written that code up front, I would have gotten the same functionality that I wrote in higher level, in higher level language one but now in higher level language too. 
So in a sense, as long as the, as the languages are complete, and again, I don't want to say oh, my language has no input, no output, so you can't do it. Yeah, okay, we're not talking about that. If my language is complete, then you can pretty much write anything with anything. And therefore, the question is not what can be done. The question is how easy is it to do it? Meaning to say that it could be that some languages lend, lend themselves towards some kind of task and other languages lend themselves towards other kind of tasks. Some languages might expose uh, some kind of construct which allows you to do things easily. And other language, you're gonna have to go through hell and high water to do it. So the question at the end is not which language is the best. The question is always which language fits best into the problem domain which I am dealing with. So the question I should be asking myself is not which language is the best. The question I would be asking myself is which language exposes what I need in order to solve my current domain. So the, the next question that arises from that, and we'll put that on hold, is so what criteria do I use in order to, in order to, to, to evaluate languages? And I'm going to talk about that in a future video.